Hello and welcome to my channel, The Grape Jelly Library, where we love to talk about books. My name is Flossie and I am so glad you could join me. I always look forward to your visit. <laughs> Table topics. Would you prefer money for a housekeeper, cook, gardener, or personal secretary? For me, it's going to be a cook. Meal prep takes too long. I tried my hand at that and I found that it was taking up my entire or pretty much all of my morning, all of my afternoon. You know, washing all the berries and chopping the pineapple and the yams and the butternut and oh gosh, all of the stuff. So I'm a big salad eater in my house. So I make sure to always have red beets and um, you know, arugula and cilantro and yams and scallions, tomatoes, things like that. So it takes a lot of time to be washing all of that and chopping all of that and packaging and all of that up. And then it's really easy to assemble, but to get to the assembly part takes quite a bit of time. Plus, even though I'm not big on too many cooked foods, I do like to have some cooked foods. So if somebody wants to put my sweet potatoes in the oven for me, I would gladly, gladly give the money over for them to have all, like open my refrigerator and just like all of the stuff organized in see-through containers. And I can just say, yes, today we're going with quinoa and farro and yams and pineapples and blueberries and that there vegan chicken yeah let's do that yeah because somebody was nice enough to do all that work for me plus i like to garden and i like to clean so that's like a no big deal to me comment below let me know which would you prefer to have money for all right, what are we going to do today? We are going to do a book haul. How do I have books if I'm participating in the Read What You Own Challenge? Well, let me tell you. Before I am, or just as much as I am a book reader, I am a book buyer. Maybe even a little bit more of a book buyer. You know, I could always make time to buy a book, but sometimes it's hard to make time to read. So what I have is eight books that have been hanging out, waiting for me to put the spotlight on them. I have many more scattered throughout the house. Um, and one by one, I will get to these piles. But I figured I haven't done a book haul in a long time. Today's a good day for one. So the first book that we are going to spotlight is I Fell in Love with Hope, Len Cowley. Against the unforgiving landscape of a hospital, a group of terminally ill patients embraces the joys within their reach. Friendship, freedom, rebellion. Each in their own way is broken. Each in their own way is stronger for it. In the midst of pain and loss, they find community, even miracles, and together they are determined to reclaim from life what illness has taken from them. Incidentally, how I go into a bookstore or a library sale um, or a used bookstore to purchase my books is always pretty much the same method. I judge a book by its cover. I do. I do. Um, sometimes I just, you know, willy-nilly throw it in the cart without even looking to see what it's about. But most times... I first look at the cover and then I second look at the story. And I know that's oh so wrong, but you know what? It is also oh so right. Somewhere in South America at the home of the country's vice president, a lavish birthday party is being held in honor of the powerful businessman, Mr. Hosokawa. Roxanne Koss, opera's most revered soprano, has mesmerized the international guests with her artistry. It is a perfect evening until a band of gun-wielding gorillas 
takes the entire party hostage. But what begins as a panicked, life-threatening scenario slowly evolves into something quite different, a moment of great beauty as gorillas and hostages forge unexpected bonds and people from different continents become compatriots, intimate friends and lovers. This is Bel Canto by Anne Patchett. The next book that I chose, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silver. On September 5th, a little after midnight, death cast calls Matteo Torres and Rufus Emeterio to deliver some bad news. They're going to die in less than 24 hours. Through the Last Friend app, these total strangers will meet up for one final epic adventure, to live a lifetime in a single day. Can it be done? We will soon find out, or we will one day find out. All right. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Operation Paperclip Annie Jacobson. In the chaos following World War II, some of the greatest spoils of Germany's resources were the Third Reich's scientific mines. The U.S. government secretly decided that the value of these former Nazis' knowledge outweighed their crimes and began a covert operation, codenamed Paperclip, to allow them to work in the United States without the public's full knowledge. Drawing on exclusive interviews with dozens of paperclip family members, colleagues, and interrogators, and with access to German archival documents, files obtained through the Freedom of Information Act and lost doziers discovered in government archives and at Harvard University, Annie Jacobson follows more than a dozen German scientists through their post-war lives and into one of the most complex, nefarious, and jealously Jealously Guarded Government Secrets of the 20th Century. Hmm, let's do this one. It's all parody. It's all parody. Saint Death's Daughter, C.S.E. Cooney. I have not read anything by Cooney. I do not even know her background. I do not even know if she has anything else written. I'm going to have to Google that. My apologies. Oh my God, I guess I have a death theme here. <laughs> Nothing complicates life like death. Lainey Stones, the daughter of crown appointed killers, was born with a gift for necromancy and a literal allergy to violence. For her own safety, she was raised in isolation in a crumbling mansion by the family's moldering revenant. When Lainey's parents are murdered, she and her psychotic sister, Nita, must settle their extensive debts or lose their ancestral home. When Lyriat's ruler, too, is murdered, it throws the whole nation's future into doubt. Hunted by Lyriat's enemies, terrorized by family ghosts, and tortured by a forbidden love for a childhood friend, Lainey will need more than luck to get through the next few months. But when the goddess of death is on your side, anything is possible. I'm excited about this one as well. Black Top Wasteland, S.A. Cosby. Sensationally good. Once known as the best getaway driver east of the Mississippi, Beauregard, Bug Montage has never stopped looking over his shoulder. He knows that no matter how long he has been out of the life, no one ever gets out completely. Now Bug is an honest mechanic, a loving husband, and a hardworking dad. But when his carefully built new life begins to crumble and a former associate comes calling with a can't miss jewelry store heist, Bug feels he has no choice but to get back into the driver's seat. Haunted by the ghost of who he used to be and the father who disappeared when he needed him most, Bug must find a way to navigate his blacktop wasteland or die trying. I'm excited about this one as well. The Tumbling Girl, Bridget Walsh. 1876 Victorian London. Minnie Ward a feisty scriptwriter for the Variety Palace Music Hall, 
is devastated when her best friend is found brutally murdered. She enlists the help of private detective Albert Easterbrook to help her find justice. Together, they navigate London, from its high-class clubs to its murky underbelly. But as the bodies pile up, they must rely on one another if they're going to track down the killer and make it out alive. Woo, we have two books that people need to make out alive in of. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm picking up a theme. I'm picking up a theme. And death pretty much is relevant in all of these books, right? What? What? Ah, ah. <laughs> okay. And the last book, I hope to get to this one by the summer. Grady Hendrix. Do you know what it is? How to Sell a Haunted House. I should actually wait till October for this one, but you know what? Maybe I start reading my haunted house stories um, late August, September. So when Louise finds out that her parents have died, she dreads going home. She doesn't want to leave her daughter with her ex and fly to Charleston. She doesn't want to deal with her family home, stuffed to the rafters with the remnants of her father's academic career and her mother's lifelong obsession with puppets and dolls. She doesn't want to learn how to live without the two people who knew and loved her best in the world. Most of all, she doesn't want to deal with her brother, Mark, who never left their hometown, gets fired from one job after another, and resents her success. Unfortunately, she'll need his help to get the house ready for sale because it'll take more than some new paint on the walls and clearing out a lifetime of memories to get this place on the market. But some houses don't want to be sold, and Luis and Mark's home has other plans for the both of them. Well, comment below. Let me know, did any of these books strike your fancy? Did any of these books pique your interest? All piqued Mayan. Until my next video, know that I love you. Be well, be good, be reading, and may all your dreams come true.